and then chat you're not going to exist for the sake of this video all right don't tell youtube don't let them know yeah don't let them know wonderful let's go ladies and gents welcome to a 1v1 arena game i know that when you guys wake up in the morning you're thinking man you know what would make my day better is watching a war game where players start with stone walls and do nothing for at least the first 15 minutes, right? That gets me out of out of bed in the morning. In fact, I don't even need to drink coffee in the morning. When I think of these stone walls, I just get so excited and energized and just ready to live, all right? Uh, this was a 1v1 ranked game on Arena uh, between the famous Arena clown Madri. Uh, very, very good clown, as they call themselves. Uh, and then Fire DE. Now, you might confuse Fire DE with Fire from Brazil. This is not that fire, all right? Uh, it's another flame in our community. And this guy's around a little over 2K, like 2050-ish. And I don't know his exact history, but I think this guy played at a pretty high level back in the mid-2000s, and I played against him many times. So, Madri, 22, 2300 player... Uh, his rating basically depends on if he's been banning open maps or not. But truthfully, even on open maps, he's probably better than Fire DE. And we have a Lithuanian's mirror. So I don't really know the situation. I don't know if they both had picked Lithuanians and didn't want to enable random. Most likely what happened is uh, some of the Arabia guys nowadays, they will have a uh they'll have mirror selected if the opponent doesn't opt in to go random sieve and i think that's probably what happened by one of these players but it is arena so i am actually streaming this youtube i'm doing this as a youtube only cast type deal so there's no like crazy distractions I'm not really like interacting with chad and there's no alerts on screen all that stuff is not here to to kind of get in your face um so normally I would say, hey, Twitch chat, uh, why, what do you think of when you think Lithuanians? But since I understand all of the people in my Twitch chat, uh, the main thing that people tend to think of is relics and the bonus with Cav attacking. Hello, Boar. Chase, thank you. Okay. Uh, it would be the cavalry bonus against... What? I can't speak! Normally I would re-record this right now. 100%. Normally, I would restart this if this was a YouTube-only cast that I wasn't actually streaming. But YouTube, I'm sorry. I did make the mistake. And I am doing this live. But they would think of the Cav bonus where you get plus one attack on your Cavalier per relic. All right? Let's slow things down. Now, that is something that is wise to think about. And normally on Arena, you'll see Fast Castle into uh, a lot of scouts. And then with a lot of scouts, you control the map, you get the relics, and then you have really strong paladins, and then life is good and great and exciting. Uh, Madri's going to take a different approach. Madri is going to make... Uh, he's going to make use of a bonus, which does exist and does sometimes contribute to Lithuanian success. But it's just not what you see be the talking point frequently. Uh, and that thing is going to be the monks. Spoilers. <laughs> Okay, uh, spoilers, we'll have some time to talk about it, but Lithuanian monasteries work 20% faster. And he says, forget about the, the trash units, forget about the knights, I don't need that, I just need monks. And I was watching this, uh, like, I think it was five days ago. I didn't really feel like watching TV, I didn't really feel like uh, doing anything except watching Age of Empires, so I just sat here, looking at games for like... Two hours you know um and i found this and i was like what is that fast castle time because watch this he's going up on 20 pop all right 20 population feudal this is the exact same population that you would see players go for if they were going for a scout build all right exact population that you would see on arabia if it was a scout build so just keep that in mind Lithuanians do receive plus 150 food at the start. So I guess if it was Lithuanians going scouts, you see 19 population sometimes at the highest level. But this eco is going to be stretched so thin. And he's going to try and get cast laid as quickly as possible because he's like, well, you know what? There's only one thing in cast laid I want. I won't need to play this game like other people play this game. Uh, meanwhile, out here, You've got Fire DE. Now, if you look at his build, 
He's got a few farms, and he's going to go up on 25 pop. This is a great population. If you want to go for the build that I mentioned, where you make a barracks, you make a stable, and then you, you make scouts, and then you get relics, and then you boom. You know, you, you go up to 100 villagers, you have some crazy economy. So this is standard stuff. I can't say that this is lacking in any way. I've watched a lot of arena. I've been able to cast arena tournaments. This is a build that happens all the time. So for experienced viewers out there, you probably are with me in that this looks normal. Okay, so by the way, um, very good call here from Red to hop in here the second he sees Madri is in the next age. I'm just wondering, what do you do? Because as Madri uh, makes a market, sells stone, and buys food, and click, will click up at the Castle Age here in a second. If I was up against Madri, and I saw he was in Feudal Age that fast, I would know that he was going YOLO Monk. Because the only thing you do with that fast of a Feudal Age is this with Lithuanians. With Malay, there's some weird builds. There are some other awkward things you can do with Sivs. I suppose you could go fast feudal for eco upgrades. But Madri's an experienced arena clown. You know it's going to be YOLO monks. So what do you do to prep for monks? Chat. I'm actually looking at chat now. Chat is almost dead, by the way. Like Twitch chat, we've got thousands of people here just dead. What do you do if the enemy is going to make monks? What's the answer? The answer is the counter, which is light cap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Actually, uh, YouTube. They, they all just said to go for Spearman. They must not listen to a thing I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's the stable. Now, this is the Castle Age time that most of the people watching my stream right now would kill to be able to achieve. You know, it's just so unattainable for them to hit Castle Age before 15 minutes. Like, oh my goodness. Like, that is just, that is just the stuff of dreams. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's possible. Just making jokes. Because you can't see their insults against me, YouTube. That's all. But um, yeah, basically this is this is exact meta approach. It's kind of suited towards countering what Madri's going to try and go for. Let's see how it works. If you want to experience true arena clownery, if you're confused as to why people call arena players clowns, I'm going to show you pure arena clownery. We have four on food, one on sheep. Three on berries, six on gold, eight on wood, three villagers making monasteries. <laughs> okay. This is going to get to a point where pretty much the only thing keeping Madri's TC running with villagers is a couple villagers on berries and then buying food with whatever gold income he has. So for now, he's fine. You need five on food to have relatively constant villager production. Enemy will be in Castle Age, but enemy will have the wood and the farm upgrade. Uh, enemy will have lots of scouts on the field. Scouts are meant to control the map. This is that standard build. And yeah, there's really nothing that I'm seeing here that really stands out to me as uh, incorrect. And now, okay. So, Fire DE is thinking, I know he's going to go for something wacky here. Thank you, Ama, for the gifted subs, by the way. But like, I know he's going to go for Monks. So instead of going one stable with like have, I'm going to try and go for my own monks. You know, just to make it competitive out there, my economy will be better because it hasn't been crazy. And I'm going to have scouts. Scouts are the counter. Badri economy update. We have more villagers making mining camps on gold. He has made one farm. And these monasteries are producing monks like crazy. 20% faster, right? That was All right. <laughs> so this is Fire, Fire DE's point of view. <laughs> I just feel the anxiety already. I just feel like, oh God, <laughs> what is this? Oh boy, there's already, we're at 16 minutes. And there's already seven monks. And this is a hundred gold a pop, right? I mean, it's so expensive. Light cap is in. Now, light cap, it's the counter, right? This is what you should make up against monks. 100 gold down the drain. Should take a long time to convert these things, and red doesn't really know where to go. There's another monk down here. And no conversions. All right. 
Lots of monks. There's now uh, a monk bringing in a relic. Of course, if you eventually get the economy to go paladins later and you have all the relics, that can be really sick in this matchup. So something to think about. Nine monks on the field for Madri. And that's enough monks that makes you think twice. <laughs> that makes you really makes you think twice about going in with those light cav. Now Fire's also adding the um he's also adding his own monks. And he is on two TCs now. And I really like how he went for a second TC on stone because he can send Vils there to eventually drop a castle if things get crazy. So I feel like in many ways, he can go in there. And he could probably get a few kills. But the worry is that he's going to lose everything. And I I don't I don't think anyone understands monk RNG, right? Because it's so inconsistent at times. So this is probably the best way to pick off a monk or two. But at the same time, if you're not engaging against the monks, it could just get progressively worse. He's killed two so far. And now it's 11, as we see atonement now for Madri, which means he can convert enemy monks. Also has a ram here. All right, so like have been running around. The eco is looking pretty decent. It could be better for red, to be honest. And it's actually pretty interesting how he's been on two TCs, but he's only ahead by one or two villagers. Badri actually farming away here. All right, so it's not as crazy idle TC as we've seen from some arena clowns in the past. Here he is with a ram. He now has... Well, 11 monks, which is what he had before. He also has three relics. All right. Do, do, do. We've got the, Basically. the ram attacking the wall. So this is kind of putting Red in a position where he knows he needs to do something. Has six light cav out here. I feel like six light cav could kill all these monks. But if Madri's paying really close attention... <laughs> Oh, oh boy, and now we have the wall of the wars. So now atonement is in as well. So what's gonna result from this craziness? This is the clown the clown wars as light cav are getting converted. That's supposed to be the counter and Then we have one monk converting one monk and then that monk converting another monk and I'll convert your monk and I'll convert it back and voodoo ridiculous and after all is said and done Madri's down to three monks in the middle of the map, which is not too great but the light cav he converted will get some kills. The scout he has will get some kills. And, well, now the scouts are back on the red team, I guess. <laughs> and this is the point where I was just like, okay, Madri, Madri, you're, you're trolling, man. You know, like, making this many monks against light cav, you're trolling. But guess what Madri's solution is? To the enemy making monks, or sorry, light cav against his monks. More monks! He's gonna make more of them! He, he's like, I must not have had enough! Why would I ever make more units? I'm just gonna make another monastery! Like, what? And here he comes again! By the way, nine on food. Alright, nine on food. Everything else is on gold. He's, he's gonna run out of gold in this game. Here he goes. With more monks. He does a really good job of starting the conversions early. So you never know if the conversion ends up being really fast that you could lose all your light cav, and that, that would be that would be problematic, right? Now, I still think we should circle back to how Red's economy should in some ways, I think, be better than this. Um, but that comes back to him at going to Monastery. And you could argue if he didn't go to Monastery right there, that the defense wouldn't have happened. So it, it kind of depends on what you feel is best. But anyways, uh, Madri is uh, at 14 monks, all right? Now, let's look at Red's point of view. He just slaughtered a dozen monks. Let's see what he sees. Oh, he sees two. He's like, oh, I can do that. Two monks. That's great. That's not too bad. We did such a good thing. I can't wait to tell my friend about this game. Okay, there's a scorpion. Oh, yeah, we can deal with that. Someone got redemption. I think they both did, but... Oh, my God! There's monks everywhere! <laughs> Where are they coming from? Now, you cannot convert enemy monasteries uh that's a sacred place you can't convert an enemy church but you can convert the stable here come the light cav they're swooping in the castle's a good thing to defend this position and madri saw that the light cav were coming in so he pulled this group back and he actually converted the stable 
And here, he's going to try and get the light calf. And there, I think you've got to maybe engage, kill a monk. I don't know. Light calf should be better. But the problem is because monk, because conversions are so inconsistent, no one has faith in, in going up against monks because you're just crossing your fingers. Now, look at that. He just bought 700 food. Madru just bought 700 food. 600, 700, a lot, okay? More than I've ever purchased in my lifetime because I, you know, have economy. Uh, but anyways, um, he just bought a bunch of food. And now he's going to idle his TC. And he's going to send villagers to stone. Meanwhile, his monks are just sitting here on the front. And so he's thinking, hmm. All right, let's go fast imp. And let's go for more monks and more monk upgrades. And let's drop a castle on his face and then go for trebs. Way behind an eco, right? Also here, he's got monks waiting at home. Red is doing a right thing to, to try and pick off monks as they go to the main group. So, uh, but it was also correct for Madri not to send out four at a time like that. And what's the economy difference? Okay, 70 villagers versus 47. It is currently three relics to two. And I hear, oh, okay. The red was converting the stable back. And now red goes in to take out the mobs. <laughs> and he sees that. <laughs> that is just ridiculous, man. There's 19 monks on the freaking map right now. Such clownery, man. All right. Well, you know, it's just one TC all in, right? No horse collar. Forget about the farms. We don't need food anymore. And now he's buying stone. So he's purchased over a thousand resources he needed in this game. But the thought process is just, just continue to pressure before the enemy can get enough out to deal with this, right? I think the correct play is to just open Hussar if you are red, in Red's position. But you need a lot of Hussars. Like, six is not going to cut it. Honestly, I wouldn't even get the Hussar upgrade. I would actually stay on Lightcap because... You don't want to spend your resources on the Hussar upgrade when you probably need Light Cav. So now we have a castle for Madri. Now you look at Red's point of view, he still doesn't know this. He's really worried. He has monks. But he also has eco. Just compare the bases for a second. Redonkulous, man. Madri, uh, 20 monks. So I, when I was watching this, I w had drank one too many beers i'll admit and i was like that's two hundred thousand gold oh my god in my head because sometimes i like, think about how i would cast a game even though i'm not casting it then i was like oh wait <laughs> okay that's not that's not actually two hundred thousand gold thank god i wasn't recording that you know so you can see the army value here uh the value number as red sees the castle is the amount of resources it costs to make whatever armies on the field and then the percentage is gold cost. I suppose the only reason that's at 90% is because of these three scorpions. Okay, we'll see. Uh, the three crucial monk upgrades come in. Block printing, illumination, and uh, the other one that I've forgotten because I'm a noob. Um, uh, printing, illumination, and... Um, uh, I said block printing. What? What is it? Um, help me out, chat. There's three you always prioritize. Uh, uh, theocracy. Thank you, Soul Scour. You're the best. And now these monks will have 12 range. And so now you have to think, not twice, but three times about getting close to them. And I suppose in theory he should be engaging. It's possible that he would clear this up. I'd like to be clear. That's how the game should work. But when the monk starts converting from other continents, you really start to think about it. And look at the three conversions. Yeah, if you go in there, you're going to lose those light cap. Meanwhile, the first treb is out. The second treb is on the way. Madri has, he, he's getting, uh, what, what's he researching there? What upgrade is that? Is that what I think it is? Heresy, which is not cheap. And that means that any time he, one of his units gets converted, it dies instead of going to the enemy side. Which is very smart because red does have atonement and red could just go for, uh, he, he could just convert the enemy monks, right? And then have a big monk force. And right there is an example of what happened. By the way, that was freaking fast. That's why Red's been so scared about being up against these monks. He doesn't want to donate all these units. 
Now, Heresy is a thousand gold, unless they made a change. Red has 122 population. He has almost double the economy. He has two relics. And he's trying to keep this castle up, even going as far as to get architecture right now, which is after masonry. So the castle already has a bunch of HP. 28 monks for Madri. Who saw that the enemy's opening help. Now, Halbadir, it's it's a unit you're okay with tossing away, I think, right? It's not like a gold unit you're upset with losing. Also, if you lose your Halbadirs right. to conversions, it's less effective when it turns back around and attacks you. But at the same time, it's also not as effective in taking out monks. i just like to, to just show you guys again Madri's economy. Now look at Red's economy. Okay. Just, just want to make that clear in case you didn't ar already get that point. Uh, this is the Relic Heist. Madri's going to try and take these. He's like, thank you very much. I need those relics. And now you see Red kind of running out of space here. I don't know if the meta is to research Onager really early. And Onager cuts space for your farms in the back of your base or what. But these, man, get that wood upgrade and chop away. You need space back there. <laughs> that that was just a that was just a tax. The Roman Catholic Church has arrived to take their tax. That's all those relics were. Pay no attention to it. Uh, Madri now realizing, okay, I'm gonna need a bit of a buffer. Also, I don't know where the monks are going. They're like bragging to the other monks, like, ha ha, I've got relics. You don't. But just look at Red's point of view. If you've never been stomped by a true clown, you don't understand the helpless feeling. That red is feeling currently. The score's really high. The eco's good. You're, you're, he's making stables now to try and get light cav out. I would say go for the attack upgrades over the armor because, like, uh, you can't get armor against God, right? God either is gonna get you, or you're going, you're going the other way. So, armoring up the calf is probably just instinct. But then again, you know he doesn't know if there's gonna be more units out here. 33 monks for Madri. And buying some food because he needs uh, his first infantry armor upgrade. Buying food because otherwise he could not afford his feudal age armor upgrade on infantry. Okay, just so we're clear. Here he comes with some pointy boys. He needs that buffer. This army value is insane. Over 6,000. Closing on 7,000. <laughs> army value and here's the moment now it's not easy to micro 31 monks that's the thing will the clownery work for madri let's see now capture age shows us kind of which ones he's clicking he will try and change focus but there's so many monks they heal themselves so nicely just constant healing it's the power of god and the trebuchets are taking out buildings. Meanwhile, Red has his own trebs. He's going to bring in some monks here of his own. But if you look at the military count, it's 47 to 23. This is ridiculous. Combined with the fact that monks have min-max conversion time, and it's really hard to calculate. You know, that RNG factor, which is insane. Poor, poor Fire DE is backed up into his base. He's taking his trebs the wrong way. He doesn't want them to be converted. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Madri's eco, it's so peaceful. But back over here, now you have Red panicking. Now, Red still has the population lead, but it's because of villagers. But villagers are just going to, to bring in resources. And then these resources are going to be spent on units that Madri is going to convert. Basically, at this point, Red's economy is working for Madri. It is now a team game. It is it is diplomacy. Everything that, that Red creates will belong to Madri. It is the simple fact of Arena when you're playing up against a clown like this. And I'm just like, Red is he's queuing up the light calf. He's going to try again. And now Madri has had an opportunity to get some pointy boys in front. He is trebbing down building after building. Soon Red is going to get housed as well as he is going for the attack upgrades. 
it, what I, what made me laugh is Red's point of view. Look at this. He has the score lead. He has the population lead. <laughs> Look at what he is experiencing right now. I once saw somebody in a, like a, some forum be like, I don't understand why people get so salty and why they want to stop playing because of arena plays. It's just a map. It's just a strategy. Imagine how helpless you feel in this type of a situation. If you don't understand, you just have to, you just have to experience it. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. 76 military for Madri. Is back up to 32 monks. Hey, like have fantastic against monks, but like have not so fantastic against helps. The monks also are going to heal so much from behind here, and perhaps an expected result as the score lead flips, and the game ends right there. What do you do that? The game ends with 131 population to 123 population. But this game has been over for a bit. Insane. This is the eco that won the game. Refreshed a few lumber camps throughout the game. Sent a bunch of villagers to gold. Used the market to buy a bunch of food and stone. And that's a winning strat right there. Crazy, right? This is why I needed to upload this, guys. It is absolutely insane. You can even see on the timeline here, like, look at the amount of resources collected. Now, granted, he did collect a lot of gold and stone uh, on his own, and he, the relics certainly helped, but my word. In terms of conversions, there wasn't as many as maybe you would think. I think many might argue that Red could have and should have engaged with the Light Calf in the early stages there. I would be hesitant, but I think I also would recognize, well, we're up against Madri here, so... If I let him have monks, I'm dead. If I kill his monks, I live. Um, but easy to say when you're watching, right? He still, in the back of his mind, knew I have a villager lead. I have two relics for a while there. So he just tried, and the ridiculousness of the clown strats paid off. Anyways, um, so just to clarify, I guess, <laughs> typically this is where I do my YouTube outro. So bye, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Uh, I... I'm recording some things currently on the live stream for YouTube channel later on. There will be YouTube only content that'll hit the channel too, but it's just a time saver for me. So kind of a bit of both. If you enjoyed watching this on the stream, say thanks T90 in chat. And if you enjoyed watching this on YouTube, just, you know, do your thing and, and just, just fall asleep to my videos. That's all I ask. Thanks YouTube. I know you do that. That's right. Don't feel called out. It's okay.